Hi there. In this video, we're going to compare two different experimental setups for measuring the Young's modulus of a material. To measure the Young's modulus of a material, you need to measure the original length of the material, the cross-sectional area of the material, so I've measured the diameter and then used pi r squared to find the cross-sectional area. And I've got my results table ready to add a force to the material and measure its extension. The material that I'm going to be testing is copper and I'm going to do this using this uh, copper wire. The copper wire is clamped to the end of the table and we're going to measure the original length uh, using this little uh, marker. So it's just a piece of tape attached to the wire. We're then going to put a load on the wire, so put a force on that wire by adding some masses to the end of this. We're then going to see how the marker moves along the, uh, along the ruler to measure its extension. We're going to look at two setups of this and we're going to look at the good points and the bad points about each one. So we're first of all going to look at a good example. So the one that I've got set up here is the good example. And I'm going to start off uh, by talking about the uh, safety precautions that uh, this setup um, involves. So first of all, we've got some safety glasses. Now they're important just in case the force on the wire is big enough to cause the wire to break. Then we're going to need our safety glasses just in case that wire comes up and flicks us in the uh, in the face. It will stop help. Those goggles will help stop um, our eyes getting damaged. Uh, this bit of card um, here is also a safety feature as well. So again, that's in case the wire accidentally breaks and the wire doesn't go uh, flinging up into the air. Also, down this end of the equipment, we've got some uh, safety precaution as well. And that is that this area underneath the masses there is clear of any feet or any other body parts. Just in case the wire breaks, those masses don't come crashing down and uh, crush your feet. So there's some safety features that are, we've got going on here. Also going to look at some of the uh, features that are um, that will help you get good results for the measurement of the Young's modulus. We're going to start off here. So uh, this part of the um, apparatus, we've got our wire coming in here. We've got two blocks of wood that are holding it together. I've looped it up and over the first bit and then back round. Then we can see it poking out the back here. That's more effective than just clamping the bit of wire between the two bits of wood because then if you're just clamping the wire between the two bits of wood then you're relying on the friction between uh, the bits of wood and the wire whereas this way looping it round it's a much much secure uh, fastening. Much less chance of the wire slipping through and I guess two problems with that would be slipping through it might change the original length and also, if it slips through completely, then it might un unexpectedly cause those masses to crash down onto the floor. Also, if you look at this uh, setup here, we've got our... Down this end of the equipment here, this is where we've got it clamped down. And we've got our pointer as far away as we can from it. The reason that that's better than uh, having it really really close is that uh, you've got a much much longer original length and therefore you're going to have smaller percentage uncertainty with your measurement. Final thing that I need to point out is how uh, to measure the diameter of the material in a uh, accurate way and uh, we do that using a micrometer and the way that we use a micrometer, so something that I commonly see uh, people doing uh, when they're using micrometers, is that they tighten up the micrometer using that bit. The problem with doing that is it's the problem with doing that is that it can very very easily be over tightened. Most micrometers have this bit at the end, and when you tighten it up, it begins to clip. When it begins to click, you know that that's when you're able to take your measurement. So that's one way that you can use a micrometer effectively. 
by just making sure that it's making that clicking noise when you've made your measurement. We're going to have a look at this setup now, which is very, very similar, but the way that this is set up, uh, a few mistakes have been made. So firstly, um, so firstly, we've just poked the uh, wire just through the end. It's not looped around like it was on the previous example, so it's not going to hold as well. Also, here we've got a really, really long wire, but then the marker that we've got is at the, really close to the end that it's being clamped down at. That's a problem because you've got a smaller measurement for the original length, and therefore you've got a much larger percentage uncertainty with that measurement. Another problem uh, that's with this equipment is there's a certain amount of distance between the pointer and the ruler. So there's about a centimetre there. That means that we've got to be really careful about getting the, our eyes at the right angle to take the measurement. So for example, from this angle, the length of the wire, it appears to be, uh, what's that? One hundred and ninety-five millimeters. Whereas if we look at it from this angle, it's going to be two hundred and three millimeters. Even if we try and line it up perfectly, it's still moving against that scale because of that distance. If we compare that to our first example, our pointer is much closer to the ruler and therefore you're going to get a much more accurate result. The final problem with, the, with this experimental setup is there's a systematic error in the measurement of the original length happening here. So we can see that the end of the ruler isn't quite where the end of the wire is. Because of this, we're going to have an inaccurate measurement of the original length and that will cause our strain measurement to be incorrect. So let's have a quick recap of how we can effectively measure the Young's modulus of a material using this method. Firstly, we need to remember our safety glasses, a little bit of card to keep that wire down in case it breaks, and to keep the area underneath the masses clear just in case they uh, fall on the ground. We need to make that distance from where it's clamped to where we're measuring it as long as we possibly can to reduce the percentage uncertainty with our measurement of the original length. Get the pointer as close as we can to the ruler. Make sure that we've looped our wire around more than once so it's less likely to slip. And finally, that we're turning the micrometer using the bit at the end rather than holding it here. I hope you found this video useful and I hope you get some accurate results when you're measuring the Young's modulus of materials.